Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Let's Get Loud podcast. This is a solo podcast episode with A. I am so sorry. My phone beeped just as I was about to say hello, good morning. And I'm going to pause and take a sip of my coffee, and you guys should do the same. Maybe you're on your walks. Probably if you live in New Brunswick, you're not on a walk because it's been raining for three days. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Okay, I am recording this like live on the Friday. So you're getting the raw, real, current uh, state of my life. We actually went out. It was a friend's birthday last night. And so we went out and it turned into one of those nights where there was one million shots. I actually was the designated driver, which felt really good. I'm not going to lie. I had a great time, really enjoyed myself. Uh, I just made the choice to drive because lately when I'm drinking, it's not all the time, but most of the time when I drink, it means no sleeping and it means feeling exhausted and feeling like crap for like two solid days. And I just didn't want that for myself. I had a lot on my list to do today and I wanted to feel great. So I decided to drive. So it was still a really fun night. We went to that place. If you're from around here called the bunker that has golf simulators, it was, it was really fun. Great vibe in there. Delicious cocktails. I did have one cocktail and maybe one shot of tequila, which is like nothing for me. It was so good. It was delicious, high quality tequila. It was absolutely everything. Okay. But here I am. I was there for hours. So don't worry if you're like, you were driving and you had a shot of tequila. Yes, I was there from seven until 11 and I had two ounces of alcohol. I got this. So we are actually, it's kind of like a transition day. I actually just told the kids that they could have a jam a day. They were very happy about that. It's like rainy and yucky. It's perfect to have a jam a day. So the kids are up having some screen time and I am doing my podcast and then I'm going to tell them to get off their devices and do something fun with me, which I'm sure kids just love that. Eh? Get off your devices and hang out with your mommy. So that's where I'm at. I would like to update you guys on a little bit of my life and what's going on. We're actually headed to Fredericton tomorrow. We always spend Easter with my mom. So we're going to Fredericton for two sleeps. I am very much looking forward to that. Love having Easter at my mom's house. So we will be heading out tomorrow for Easter with the fam. Anyways, so I want to talk today about prioritizing yourself and having kids. So this is a topic that I brought up on Instagram and it really got a lot of attention. I was like, okay, obviously if people are really connecting to this content, it's something that maybe we can have in a little bit of a longer form conversation. So, you know, before I get into it, I really want you guys to know my intentions are always, are never to make you feel bad about yourself or your choices or shame you. It's always to give you perspective and make you think, huh, and, you know, maybe we're looking at one side of the coin and just to flip the coin over and, and have a look at the other side. And so I want to share a little bit with you guys about my personal journey. So, I mean, basically as an adult, I had been trying, I had been losing and gaining weight my entire adult life. And it wasn't until my twins were one and Alfie was three that I joined your weight loss. And I really like looked around and I was like, huh no one's going to save me. Like no one is coming to save me right now. No one is going to carve out this time for me. No one's going to say, this is a great time to go meal prep, Alicia. You should go for an hour long walk. Where's your water bottle, Alicia? We were just in survival mode. And I, it was, I don't know, it almost took the extreme of there really not being any extra space, time, mental energy to really push me into action. And I just share that with you because my kids aren't young anymore. And so maybe you guys are looking at my life now, um, but I do want to remind you that I did start this journey when my kids were really little. And I really had this realization that no one was going to do it for me. So one thing that when I was discussing this with people of their obstacle, when it comes to weight loss, health, when they have kids is time. I'd love to talk about time. Time is that thing. Just that thing that most of us feel we don't have enough of. I don't like the whole saying you have the same 24 hours in the day because we, yes, we all have 24 hours in the day, but we don't all have the same level of responsibilities, um, commitments. So I don't like that saying. Having said that, I'm also not into the, I don't have time sentence. 
That is not a part of my vocabulary. And I just use the word, I don't prioritize it. And that kind of can hurt sometimes. So let's really unpack this whole time situation. So first thing I think people are like, oh, I want to lose weight. I need to exercise. Don't have time for that. Well, here's the thing, guys. You do not need to exercise to lose weight. In order to lose weight, you need to create a calorie deficit. Uh, exercising can be a part of that calorie deficit, but not necessary. So you might be in a season of your life where you take exercise completely off the table. And that's okay. Also, maybe we can think about not not as exercise, but just as movement. So could you move a little bit more? You know, instead of sitting at the park when your kids are at the park, could you walk around the park? Could you walk to the park? So there's all kinds of different ways to increase your energy out without actually exercising, without taking more time, okay? And then on the subject of time, I need to be really, I just need everyone to pause. And there's a couple things that we can look at. Number one, I'd love for you to look at the average screen time on your phone and then tell me that you don't have time. Harsh. It's harsh, isn't it? And, but maybe you're thinking, yeah, but like, I'm so tired. So I, like I sit on the couch at night when the kids go to bed for a good two hours and I scroll social media and I get that. And I do that as well, but you could, you don't want to prioritize it and that's okay. Like, that's okay. What you might feel like you're lacking is mental energy. That's a whole different conversation. And because it does require some mental energy to do these things, but it's not necessarily time, okay? And I just want you guys to get in the habit and, and to practice using that CEO mindset. And you're not going to say, I didn't have time. Like if you, your CEO is giving a talk and, and she's like, I didn't have time for that. That rubs me the wrong way. But if she says, I actually, that didn't get prioritized this week, maybe next week, you know, and really just owning that we're not prioritizing it. There's always the option to wake up early as well. I know many of you are tired. Uh, when I did start my journey, I started waking up at 4.50, I think I would get up to get to the gym. I went most days, even if the kids had been up in the night, because I just told myself, like, your kids are little, they're going to be up in the night. And if you start creating a habit of hitting snooze when you didn't have the best sleep ever, you're going to continue to do that. Now, as I'm sharing that with you guys, I don't want this to come across those like, who cares? Do it anyway. There were times that I turned off my alarm. There were times I didn't go. There were times that I chose rest and sleep. And there needs to be a place for both. And it's really hard because there's no perfect line. There's no like, you must do this. You can't do that. You have to do this. It's really for you to figure out and for you to decide. And even when I did turn off my alarm, I wouldn't say, well, I couldn't go to the gym today because I didn't sleep or I had to do this. I just say, I made the choice. I prioritize sleep this morning. Simple as that. We don't excuse it away and we own it. So that's my little pep talk with time when it comes to exercise. You don't have to exercise. My other pep talk with time is that you probably have more minutes than you realize. And if you work a regular nine to five, there's time before work, there's time at lunch, there's time after. It's okay if you don't want to prioritize it to exercise, but there are some minutes there. The other thing about time is, are you efficient with your time? Could you create systems in your current life that could help you to be more efficient with your time? These are all just questions I'm throwing out there. And then the other piece is, what do you need more minutes for? Like when, if I asked you, for your health journey, do you feel like you don't have a lot of time? Most people would say, yes, don't have time. And then I say to you, okay, what do you need time for? People are like, huh. What do I need time for? Well, exercise, sure. We just already went over that. We don't need to exercise and we could get up early if we wanted to, okay? Well, then what about meals, making fancy meals? Don't need to make fancy meals to, to lose weight, just need to create a calorie deficit. So it kind of becomes like, huh. And now this piece is not your fault. This is the diet industry's fault because every other time 
that you've tried to create weight loss for yourself. It was so hard. It took so long. You had to meal prep. You had to go grocery shop for this random spice. You could only eat this soup. And it was, it felt so hard. And so reminding yourself over and over, this doesn't have to feel so hard. This doesn't have to be so difficult. I don't need fancy food can really help you to feel like you have access. Another thing I always like to, you know, give myself perspective with is looking around and looking at other women who have kids and are, have continued to prioritize their health. And I just look at them and I think, huh, what do they have in common? It's no physical thing. It's not a, it's not a age. It's not help. It's not what they do for a living. It's the way they think they prioritize it. And when I look at these women, I don't compare myself. I don't use it to make myself feel bad. I look at it from the, the perspective of like, what's possible. And I look at it with inspiration. All right. So you don't need two meals. My gosh, you guys, if there's any advice I can give you is start this soon, start this early. I have never made two meals for my family. Now my meals have evolved as the kids have gotten older. Yes, but I, I never made two meals. I just didn't do it. There's no kid meal and there's no healthy meal. It's just, this is our meal. Often I'll do things that are like decomposed. So like rice, chicken, and broccoli. Well, if they don't like broccoli, it's not a big deal. They can try a little bit. No big deal. They move on. There's other things. So I always make sure that I don't really have to do this anymore because I've been doing it for so long. But when they were really little, I would always make sure that they had like a safe food so that when I was making a dinner, there was something I knew that everyone would eat. Um, and so we can rely on that kind of safe food, try the other things, never force them to finish their plates. If I'm having a meal that I know they're probably not going to eat a lot of, I'll like schedule the dessert to be like a smoothie. So I know they're getting their nutrients. I know they're getting vitamins and really looking at it from the long-term game. I'm not going to tell you guys what to do and make, you know, raising your kids so that they're not picky eaters is a whole nother conversation, but this does come up for many women when it comes to obstacles for their weight loss journey, because they say, well, my kids won't eat that and I don't wanna make two meals. And I just kind of wanna say, but you're eating food that you don't like? Like why, like at the end of the day, your needs and your kids' needs are, it's like this spectrum. And some parents feel more comfortable with 100% meeting every one of their kids' needs. And if they have time for their needs, then amazing. And some parents are more this side and one does not make you a better parent. It, there's no right or wrong. It's really a spectrum. And I think what's important is that you find the place that feels right for you and, and what, what unlocks, what gives you access to the best version of yourself. But I'm going to tell you the best version of yourself is not meeting every single one of your kids needs and not even considering your own. And let's talk about a chicken nugget meal. Actually, let's play a fun game on Instagram. Okay. After this podcast comes out, I'd love for you guys to come follow me on Instagram and I, uh, your baby loss Instagram and today, and why don't I give a kid's meal and then I'll give the suggestion on how to make it like adulty. So let's go back to chicken nuggets and fries, make a side salad and make a nugget salad for yourself. Not that there's magic in salad, but like you can still eat the nuggets and create weight loss for yourself. There's little tweaks and maybe there's cucumbers in your salad. So your kids just have little slices of cucumbers. Boom. Everyone's happy. Nuggets are made and we're finding ways to tweak meals. So maybe, you know, what everyone has on their plate might look a little bit different, but you didn't make two meals. See what I'm saying here? Anyways, I'd be happy to offer you guys some suggestions for that to help you out. So that's the, that, that conversation, like I said, is like, that's a long conversation. It's a different conversation, but it does come up so frequently when I'm having conversations with women about obstacles they have, and it is making two meals and having picky eaters. And that's not an easy thing to fix though. Going to be super transparent and so you're going to want to work at that. Like if you want to change that, then amazing. We can change that. That can be tweaked. You can work on that, but you need to want to, and you need to want to do it long-term 
or you accept it and you find a way to work around it. There's no, there's no obstacle that is a barrier to your success when it comes to weight and health. Nothing. There's nothing. There's things that we can work on and you can choose to work on your kids being picky eaters or you can choose to accept it and figure it out. It both can give you access to success. All right. The next thing I want to remind you guys is that this health slash weight loss journey is going to look a lot different than it did before you had kids. And different doesn't mean bad. Different just means we need to adjust. And it means that what worked before might not work now. Maybe before you used to count calories. Well, when you have kids and you're trying to count calories, like you just have enough time to shove something in your face sometimes. So it's like, if you think that you're going to like get out your food scale, which doesn't seem that hard. It doesn't seem, I actually was um, having a conversation with someone who hadn't had a baby yet. And they were like, I don't get it. Like how many, the, when the babies first come out, they just like sleep. Like how hard could it be? And I'm like, I don't know how to explain this to you, but like everything is just so hard. <laughs> and you're like, well, I'll have time to weigh my rice. I mean, you do have time, but you won't want to prioritize it because you're so tired and because the house is a mess and all the things. So it's just so hard to describe that to people, but you're going to need a new routine and you're going to need to be patient with yourself. And I would encourage you guys to focus on the resources that you do have. Focus on the time that you do have. Focus on the environment that you are in picky eaters, not picky eaters, one kid, seven kids, and say, how can I make the most of what my current situation? So often we are staying stuck in waiting for it to be easier. Newsflash, it's not going to get easier. There will never be this magical, perfect time where it is so easy to prioritize yourself and prioritize yourself, your health. The best time was actually yesterday. But that's past, so let's do it today. And you can start chipping away. You can start working at small little routines. And the more you stay connected to that goal, the easier it's going to be as you continue. Not just this magical, oh, my kids have gone to school now. My kids graduate high school now. My kids are at university now. Please stop waiting for your life to get easier for your kids to grow up in order for you to take care of yourself, okay? Take it day by day. One day, I remember the newborn stage or even just like baby's phase. One day you're crushing it. You're like making homemade muffins. You went for a walk. Everyone had naps. Kids are in bed and showered at eight o'clock. And you're like, I am crushing this. Then, then the next day happens and it's a shit show. And you're like, oh my gosh. And it doesn't mean that the next day is also going to be a shit show. It just means that every day is probably going to look different. And don't think that there's this magic sauce, and this magic formula. Just really say, okay, today, hello today. What do I have access to? You know, what do I have? What are my obligations today? How am I feeling today? How can I make the most of today? And then you close your eyes and you go to bed and you think, okay, tomorrow I have access to a whole nother day. And you know what? Sometimes you might need to leave the laundry. Sometimes you might need to leave the dishes. Sometimes you might need to leave the kids, leave them with someone else uh, if possible. But it doesn't make you a bad mom. You're not being selfish. There's a reason why if the plane is going down, they tell you to put your mask on first. And if you are listening to this and you're like, oh, that's me. Like, I want to share with you guys that I, I almost lost myself in motherhood. You know, we had some fertility issues and I wanted Alfie so bad. And when he arrived on the scene, I gave him absolutely every ounce of my body, literally. And I was exclusively breastfeeding, which is a whole nother level because you like physically have to be there or your child doesn't have food. I made the choice. I made the choice. I didn't have to. I made the choice to not pump. So it was exclusively me. And I think that just started off my let my life as a mom, as like, he needs me all the time. Like I need, to, he needs me all the time. And then boom, all of a sudden I'm pregnant with twins. You know, I was literally, I'll be was one and I got pregnant with twins. And so I just, I kind of blinked and I was like, shit, I don't know who I am anymore. I'm not taking care of myself. I don't feel comfortable in my skin. I don't have any energy. I need to do this for me, but also for them. So when you're struggling with 
prioritizing yourself and it, you feel guilt. It feels like you're taking away from them. I want you to think about your sons and your daughters as adults. And I want you to think as you, as their mother and you're watching them, what do you want for them? You want for them to prioritize themselves and their happiness and their health. And what you can do, the number one thing you can do to ensure that your children will prioritize their health, their happiness, and their well-being, the number one thing you can do oh, is you can do it yourself. They're watching you. And if they see you say, bye guys, I'm going to go for a walk. I'll be back in 30 minutes. That becomes their norm. And when you cook them a meal and you're like, okay, guys, this is what we're eating. Choose from this, this, and this, that becomes their norm. And when you stop at maybe not their favorite place for lunch, but a place that everyone can coexist with, that becomes their norm. And I, I trust me, you are going to, they're going to be okay. They don't need every single ounce of you. And above and beyond that, we could teach them a little bit of resilience. We could teach them to do things for themselves. And we could show them and teach them that it's not just all about them all the time. That mom matters too. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. And I hope if you are a mother of a my negative, uh, you maybe you're conceived yesterday to the mother of a 25-year-old. 30 year old. I think you, the job never ends. I hope that this podcast has inspired you to stop waiting to prioritize your health, your health, to not use the language that I don't have time to start prioritizing to what's important to you and to make sure that you are somewhere on that priority list. It doesn't have to be the top of the top, but just on there somewhere. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We will be back next week for another solo podcast episode. Bye.